Okay, I just want to do a quick video um, about my latest cube, uh, just showing um, some of the post-processing um, work that needs to be done and uh, just explaining how the internal mechanism works. Um, there will be spoilers, so I'll start off with just the bare essentials to get um, a successful print uh, and a working cube. Uh, and then we'll dive into the actual internal mechanism and how that works and how that was designed. Um, so just a note on presentation. Um, I'm not a fan of painting small details, so I've designed this in such a way that um, you can just paint the, um, the whole thing gold and send it back to reveal the detail. Uh, and then you could apply a finishing coat of lacquer or, so or something, however you want to finish it off. Um, here's one that I've an earlier cube that I've painted, uh, and here's the latest design uh, that hasn't yet been painted. Um, this is in Prusament Mystic Brown, which is a nice dark brown and has a nice um, iridescence to it. Um, I quite like that. I'm interested to see how that's going to turn out once I paint it. Uh, and this one I just wanted to show uh, just as an example of what uh, painting it might look like. Um, that hasn't been lacquered. Um, so it is still fairly rough, but um, you get the idea. So we'll just put that one aside, uh, because this is the one we want to talk about. Uh, this is the, the latest design. Um, features an entirely new locking mechanism, uh, and it's print in place. So there's a top and a bottom, so that's the bottom face. Um, one thing to make note of is your Z um, offset. Um, make sure you're not squishing it down into the bed because you'll get elephant's foot and that will jam up all these uh, little moving parts. So you want to have good clearance. Um, if you can't do that, then um, you can always use a raft because if we're going to be sanding this back anyway, uh, the, the raft isn't really going to affect the, the finished product. Um, so it'll print in one piece just like that. Uh, so the first thing you want to do when it's printed is start to free it up. Now I use a straight razor. Um, the first step is to just work it into the sides here and just you'll hear a little crack as they release and just work it all the way around um, until you've sort of freed them all up. This is one I've obviously done before. Uh, and then the fingers are in pairs so it's sort of like a claw, two claws that interlock so you want to find the the far end of the fingers and just give it a little push just to make sure they're free and just work your way around um, just with your thumb just push it down and out just to make sure it's free and it's got a little bit of movement uh, and by the time you do that it should unlock uh, it prints in the unlock position and of course this one's locked so just let me uh, without spoiling it I'll do that off camera there we go so by the time you've freed up all these fingers, that should actually slide apart. You might find it'll get stuck halfway um, because it has this uh, internal sliding core. Uh, so you might... So here's where we start to get into spoiler territory where I'm explaining internal mechanisms, but uh, you might just need to get a, a blade uh, and just poke in, in there just to free up those two internal sliders uh, and get them moving. And then it should open fully at that stage, uh, and you should be able to turn it. Um, now the final part that will need freeing up, and probably the most difficult, are the dials here at the end. And there's a 45 degree split just at the top of the dial there. Um, just enough where you could work a, uh, a hobby knife in. Uh, just sort of gently wedge it in there all the way around just so you hear that crack um, and just for finishing off any burrs what I like to get is just a little sliver of um, aluminium can and just um, work it around the gap there all the way around just to make sure we de it and um, that'll start to spin. Now it might be a bit stiff initially um, but what you might want to do is just just work it back and forth until it frees up uh, so you can get your the palm of your hand in there um, with it closed and just really work that back and forth um, and once you, you move it around a fair bit it'll um, it'll start to free up so 
So after we've freed up all the moving parts uh, and we want to lock the box, um, we'll basically slide the two halves together, turn the dials until they mesh and the whole cube comes together. Uh, now to actually lock the box we need to turn the top dial 180 degrees and then we'll turn the bottom dial just while we're fid fiddling with the top dial until we find the slot where the bottom dial will move uh, and then we alternate left and right to work our way deep into the maze. That's pretty much all there is to it, to the uh, preparation. Uh, so now is where we get into spoiler territory and I'll explain the mechanism in detail. So if you don't want to know, turn off now. We're done with those. Okay, so inside this cube are basically two, uh, two labyrinth maze puzzles and they're connected by a little slider so that you can't directly manipulate uh, the tool to navigate the maze. You've actually got to turn both these dials in conjunction. Now I could say we'll get into spoilers next and I'll tell you the solution but the reality is I've already given you the solution because to get out of a maze all you need to do is retrace your steps uh, and obviously you'll get back out. So we'll turn alternating dials until the top dial rotates freely and we'll find the spot where it unlocks. Voila. Um, now there's a trick. This is an earlier version of the maze where there's only one path in and one path out uh, and we can see that here. Okay so we can see the path that the maze takes goes in uh, and just follows this linear track and the two halves so there's two mazes here um, and they're arranged in such a way that when you have a diagonal here uh, you have a split, flat spot here so no travel on one and the other one moves so you go left right left right uh, making moves and as you go you you slide the core up and down uh, now that's not much of a puzzle I thought that was a bit too easy so this maze here. This is the same as the internal mechanism of the final core and what we'll notice the path of our maze has branches so now we've got a couple of dead ends. So just two dead ends and a little bit of free travel at the end there um, and that's all it takes to make this a much more difficult puzzle um, because it's much easier to get in than it is to get out. Uh, so just two two dead end tracks on the top and on the bottom uh, so one there and I think there's one up there as well that we can't see yep there is and then to lock the two halves together is just this little key on the end that's where we turn it 180 degrees to lock that in because there's only one position where that will release um, so that's the actual locking mechanism and then the maze just prevents us turning these two halves freely the trick I've used. As I'm going into the maze, I'm leaving some breadcrumbs so I know where I've gone. So there we go. Into the end. So we know we're at the end when we've got that little uh, bit of travel in the top dial and the bottom dial won't turn unless we turn it to the middle. And now we can turn our way out retracing our path exactly that we took to get in until that top dial turns freely, disengages and now the two halves release and they can slide apart. So if you want the, the fully embellished puzzle cube, that's a good 36 hour print um, that's available. I've also made the internal locking mechanism if you just want a puzzle um, that's about a six hour print uh, uh, that's all for today thank you very much